Okay, so the first question is, what are the advantages of ultrasound over MRI? Um, ultrasound is a great tool. Um, it is good at looking at things that are relatively superficial, so close to the skin. So it's amazing for things like tendons, ligaments, um, superficial structures. So anything that's superficial is amazing for. Um, it is a dynamic test, which means that we can uh, look at the patient's movement and look at things in real time. So it can be very useful in patients who have dynamic problems. Um, it can be used to treat, so we can use it to guide injection um, and in that context the patient can come, have a diagnosis by uh, ultrasound first and then we can use the ultrasound to guide the injection. So in patients who have the right type of problem that need potential treatment, it's an amazing tool. Okay, so the next question is what are the risks of steroid injections? Um, there are quite a few small, uh, small time risks. So the most common thing that happens as a consequence of a steroid injection is to get a steroid flare, which is a period of a transient increase in pain, uh, usually for up to a couple of days. And that's relatively common, happens in between two and 20 odd uh, percent of patients. So we warn patients before we do the steroid injection that they may experience pain and that they should, they should take pain, pain relief to counter that. Um, most of the other common, uh, complications are quite rare and uh, uncommon. The most significant of those um, is uh, issues in terms of the skin and particularly with injections where they're close to the skin like in the hands and feet uh, or in the shoulder at the AC joint um, we would be worried about skin pigment change or soft tissue atrophy um, and these are cosmetic complications which cause no problem in a functional or symptomatic sense but can be um, quite a negative thing for the patient um, in terms of how it looks and so again we, we try and avoid that by using a particular type of steroid and using good technique even with that, it can occur. So again, it's important to warn the patient about that before we do it um, so that they're aware. If it happens, it's not the end of the world and it does actually tend to go away over time, but it can take a long time. So the patient needs to be aware of that. And the last uh, potential complica complication that I'll talk about is um, with drug interactions. The most significant of these is an HIV medic medication. No one seems to know much about it, but essentially one of the antiretroviral medications called ritonavir um, has a high association with blocking an enzyme that breaks down the steroid and patients can have significant uh, side effects as a result of that. So in my practice now, I tend to ask patients if they're taking any antiretroviral medication before uh, doing the injection. So the next question is, when would I recommend a plain, sorry, an MRA, MR arthrogram over a plain MRI? Um, so an MRI is probably the best go-to test after ultrasound um, for assessing most of the pathology that we want to see in the shoulder. But there are certain problems which originate inside the joint. So for example, cartilage problems, labrum problems, and ligament problems. Um, and also some subtle um, uh, uh, tendon problems, for example, minor tears that are difficult to see on a normal MRI. For all of those type of problems, an MR arthrogram is a very useful test. And what we do is we put dye into the joint and that dye distends the joint and highlights those structures that are normally difficult to see and acts as a way to contrast those structures out. And suddenly we can see them in much nicer detail and we can identify tears uh, in particular much more easily. Um, so in those group of patients where we're considering a, a problem within the joint or relating to the undersurface of the tendon, an arthrogram is a great test. 